Hello everyone, welcome to Split Second. My name is Takeda and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. We'd also like to remind you guys to try and support your local game store by buying MTG products there. Help keep your store alive. Finally, while the current global situation continues, we will be providing everyone with high-quality digital gameplay rather than paper magic. Now, it's time to get into the fun. This week, I'm piloting my Suns Black Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Luis is piloting Breakfast the Revy, inspired by Cobblepot. David brought Splint Face's Muldrotha. Bal is on Shuffle Atla Palani. Let's check our starting hands. Luis kept a pretty good 7, with an Utopia Sprawl to power a turn 2 the Revy, while also making his untap ability much stronger. Enlighted Tutor can be used at any point to pivot into a combo or a control game plan. Carpet of Flowers will prove useful as ramp, while Eternal Witness's power of recursion could be vital to either reutilize Enlighted Tutor or another important card that he comes across. Breeding Pool, Savannah, and Marsh Flats can cover all of Luis's color needs. David kept a decent hand with Animate Dead and Intuition that he can eventually assemble his infinite combo with. Collector Roof can potentially keep some player's ramp under control, although it does stop David himself from going off with his Lion's Eye Diamond loops or from using Mox Diamond correctly. Windswept Heath and Cephalid Colosseum are a good start as far as lands are concerned, but he will definitely need to draw some more. Windfall could be key to rapidly shifting into a better hand. Bal kept a very good hand with a turn 1 accelerant in Utopia Sprawl, a Rhythm of the Wild to protect his creatures or enable combos with his commander, and a Dockside Extortionist, one of the best creatures in CADH. Crop Rotation could be used for getting either a Utility Land or a Gaius Cradle. Bal's land base covers all his colors thanks to Command Tower, Tarnished Citadel and Bloodstained Mire. I was unlucky enough to have to mulligan twice and I kept a 1 lander with a Noble Hierarch. This was a risky keep, but it does have a dork that can power things like Jeskai Ascendancy and Song of Creation can be powerful all by itself. I also have Sterling Grove, which I plan to sacrifice to get a Sylvan Library on my third turn. Dig Through Time is a great way to draw more cards, while Capsize is an outlet for my deck. Let's start the game. Which opens up with a Breeding Pool, shocking himself for a Utopia Sprawl. He passes. David plays it safe with a Windswept Heath before passing the turn. Bal plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Taiga. Much like Luis, he casts Utopia Sprawl on it before passing to me. I play my only forest and tap it for my Noble Hierarch. Luis plays a land to cover his missing mana and casts Derevi. With Derevi's ETB trigger on the stack, David cracks his Windswept Heath for an Overgrown Tomb. Luis untaps his Breeding Pool and passes. David plays a Cavern of Souls as his land for turn, naming Avatar. He passes to Baal without further plays. Baal plays a Command Tower and casts Rhythm of the Wild. We initially assumed this Atla Palani would be something like a Divergent Atla. However, the Rhythm could mean something else. Everyone at the table is now a little suspicious. I don't draw a second land card, but I do get to play a Sylvan Caryatid for mana and pass. Luis plays a Command Tower and casts a Carpet of Flowers. It's not very impressive considering there are exactly zero islands in play. However, he knows I will have to play an island eventually. Luis swings at the vid because he is the person most likely to need life as a resource and then untaps the Revy with its own ability. He passes to the vid. David plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He does think for a bit and passes, much to our confusion. Bal plays a Tarnished Citadel as his land for turn. He taps Taiga to cast a Dockside Extortionist for just two treasures. He resolves the Rhythm of the Wild trigger and gives X haste rather than a plus one plus one counter. He chooses to do this because of the specific combo lines from his deck. He chooses not to attack and passes. We are all kind of confused trying to guess what that Atla Palani deck is about. On my turn, I finally draw land and play a Misty Rainforest. I decide to pass without cracking my fetch land, respecting the 3 mana open from the Derevi deck as a potential Avon Mind Sensor. On my end step, Luis ends up tapping his command tower to cast an Enlightened Tutor, finding a survival of the fittest. 
because I don't need the mana right now, I still don't crack my fetch. Luis casts his survival of the fittest. He activates it and discards an eternal witness to find a Thrasios. He cracks his Marsh Flask for a Tundra and casts Thrasios. He attacks the vid with the Revy and untaps Breeding Pool. On his second main phase, he casts Mana Crypt and I respond by cracking my fetch for a Tundra. This way he doesn't get the mana from the Carpet of Flowers, considering it's his second main phase. Once the Crypt resolves, Luis passes with enough mana to activate his Thrasios once. David plays a Gaius Cradle and the plot thickens. He casts a Collector Roof. Bal responds by casting Crop Rotation, sacrificing the Tarnished Citadel. Luis doesn't really know why Bal is playing like this, but he decides to Mental Misstep it anyway, paying 2 life. He does this because Mental Misstep is a narrow counter spell, and we're not sure exactly where Bal is trying to go. With the Oof still on the stack, Luis activates Thrasios, scries to the bottom, and reveals a Nomads and Core. With that, David passes and we get to Bal's turn. Bal just draws and passes. We all guess that he needed that land for something. Now that David has somewhat dampened the table, I feel that it's safer for me to simply cast Thrasios. My intention is purely to start drawing cards along with Luis. I pass the turn. On his upkeep, Luis wins the Crypt roll. He already has half of his combo in hand and has a survival in play to get the other piece. However, he actually discards Nomans and Core to survival, probably not confident he can win when everybody at the table has so much mana open. Luis goes ahead and grabs Isan. Luis casts Isan with the mana he had floating from Carpet of Flowers and Utopia Sprawl, tapping Tundra as well. He swings at David with the Revy and untaps his breeding pool. Then Luis passes. David draws and casts a Toxic Deluge, which he already had for a bit now. He pays 3 life. This is pretty bad news for me and Luis, especially because I just wasted mana casting Thrasios. Luis responds by activating his own Merfolk, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Submerge. Deluge resolves. He passes to Baal. Baal draws for turn and casts Magas of the Moon, revealing the true intentions behind his crop rotation, getting a basic land. With Collector Roof out of the way, he can still use his treasures in order to have access to all his colors. Everyone else is very screwed. I respond with an Enlightened Tutor. I grab Chrome Mox to ramp and to fix my mana. Magus of the Moon resolves and Bal gives his Magus haste and attacks Luis since Mana Crypt is already lowering his life total. Then he passes. On my turn, I draw the Chrome Mox. I think for a really long while, and eventually I decide to cast it and exile the Sterling Grove, giving me green and white mana. I'm still a bit scared that I might miss the blue mana though, but there is nothing I can really do about it. I play Akiri and that's my turn. Luis taps and flips for the Mana Crypt, winning. Since all his lands are non-basic and all my islands have been transformed into mountains, he is unable to cast anything. He does lament his decision not to grab a basic land before passing the turn. David plays a Soul Guide Lantern for his turn. When it enters the battlefield, he exiles Nomans and Core. This means Luis can no longer do the breakfast combo and will have to win through combat. On his turn, Bal plays his own survival of the fittest, sacrificing one of his treasures. He doesn't attack anyone. Bal isn't sure what my deck is about and he fears that Akiri might grow a lot. He passes. On my turn, I play a Verdant Catacombs. And I think about why the hell I didn't exile a blue card to this mock so I could just cast my Thrasios. I attack Luis with Akiri and pass. Luis once again wins the Mana Crypt flip, annoying the hell out of us. He plays a Forbidden Orchard and passes. There's a few things he can draw to get out of this, but not that many. David plays a Sculling Tarn and also passes. Bal draws for turn, plays a Savannah and once again decides not to attack and pass. We're all staring at each other with our mountains piling in front of us. On my turn, I swing with Akiri at David. I pass with all my permanents untapped. On Luis's upkeep, he finally loses a Mana Crypt flip, taking 3 damage, and passes. David draws for turn and also passes. Bal draws for turn and keeps it conservative by passing to me. I draw, play a Temple Garden, attack David and also pass. Luis wins the Mana Crypt flip and simply passes as well. David keeps the draw go strategy flowing. Bal draws for turn and actually screams because he drew a basic land. He plays a forest, sacrifices a treasure to activate survival, discarding an Elish Norn. He gets himself a Bloom Tender, which he casts immediately. 
it gives it haste thanks to the Rhythm of the Wild and taps it right away, generating 2 mana to cast a Collector Oof. David decides to cash in his lantern for a card and Oof resolves. It enters the battlefield and Ball chooses to give it a haste as well. He then goes to combat and swings with Magus and Oof at Luis. Ball then passes. On my turn, I play a Voyaging Satyr. This is probably the worst mana dark I could have drawn. I attack David with Akiri and pass to Luis. Luis gets back to winning the Crypt Rolls. He simply draws and passes the turn. David does very much the same and he now has 8 cards in his hand, so he is forced to discard a Bitter Ordeal. Bal draws for turn and taps 2 mountains to cast a Goblin Bombardment. He goes to combat and swings the Oof and Magus at Luis. He passes to me. I now have a plan on how we can get out of this situation. I draw, play a mountainous Calding Tarn, attack David for one with my commander and pass to Luis. Luis takes 3 damage from the mana crypt and passes with 7 cards in his hand. David draws for turn, plays a mountainous wooded foothills and passes. Bal is worried this game won't be interesting enough for our viewers. I assure him I can make it interesting in just a few turns. Bal draws for turn, plays a mountainous misty rainforest and goes to combat. He sends Magus and Oof at Luis just like last time. Before blockers are declared, I cast Natural Affinity, turning everyone's lands into 2-2 two -two creatures. Luis can now block with his lands and deal with the Magus of the Moon. Luis blocks the Magus with all his lands, making sure that Bal can't use Goblin Bombardment to save the Magus. Bal's not done though. He sacks his Magus to Goblin Bombardment and decides to ping Akiri for 1 damage. Everyone's mana is now unlocked and I suspect a Pyroclasm effect. On his second main phase, Bal plays Atla and I respond by cracking my Verdant Catacombs. I get Tropical Island. David also responds by sacrificing his Skyland Tarn for a basic island. Unfortunately, all other fetches have summoning sickness and Bal regrets playing Misty in his first main phase. Atl resolves and gets a counter from Rhythm of the Wild. Then, Bal taps his Bloom Tender and casts a Subterranean Tremors with X equal 2. This will kill everyone's lands except the ones that enter play after the natural affinity. Basically, Bal's idea is to pummel us with Atl Palani until the rest of the game. However, he forgot that Luis had drawn one card with Thrasios, Submerge. Luis casts it, targeting Atla. It resolves and Bal chooses to put his commander on top of his library. Luis then casts a crop rotation, sacrificing his command tower and fighting a Gaius Cradle. He taps it for 4 green, since all his other lands are creatures. He spends 1 to activate survival of the fittest, discarding Protein Hulk and finding a Bloom Tender. He's basically preparing his next turn when we will all have no lands thanks to the Pyroclasm effect. Luis activates survival again, discarding Cephalid Illusionist to find Academy Rector. At this point, he remembers it's probably smart to wait and see if David has anything to say about Tremors, so he floats 4 more mana from the rest of his lands before passing priority on the Subterranean Tremors. David responds to Tremors with an intuition. He chooses a pile of Flusterstorm, Life from the Loam and Pernicious Deed. He realizes that Bal is actually the person who is the most interested in having his own spell counter at this point, so he chooses him as a target for his spell. Bal does give David Flusterstorm and David casts it, countering Bal's spell. Before Bal leaves his second main phase, Luis plays Derevi using his ability in the command zone. In response to David's ETB, I cast Dig Through Time. It resolves and Luis untaps Cradle with the Revis ability. He taps Cradle again for 5 mana. He spends another green to activate survival again and discards the Bloom Tender he just tutored for, grabbing an Aven Mind Sensor. He plays it. Even though there are 3 fetch lands in play, none of them can be activated right now because of the natural affinity, which means the Aven Mind Sensor might stop us from getting lands. Finally, everyone passes priority and the turn actually ends. I tell everyone that I promised I would make this interesting, and I did. On my turn, I untap, crack my Skulling Tarn, and I'm lucky enough to find a Taiga in the top 4. I then decide to cast Windfall, just because Luis has been sculpting his hand for the entire time and I think it's better for all of us if he does not get to keep his current hand. For my land drop, I play a Windswept Heath, look at the top 4, and once again, I am lucky enough to find a land. This time I get a Sacred Foundry, I didn't find anything that deals with the current threats in the board, so I just play a Thrasios. 
I go to combat and attack the vid for one. Eventually I might have enough commander damage to take the vid out of this game. I go to my end step. Bal decides to sacrifice his collector roof to kill the Avon Mind Sensor. Then he sacrifices his Misty Rainforest to find a stomping ground untapped and casts Nature's Claim targeting survival of the fittest. His greatest fear was that Luis would use it to find a Nellish Norn. The Nature's Claim resolves and Luis gains 4 life. The V takes this opportunity to also crack his fetch for a bayou. On his upkeep, Luis wins the Crypt Flip again. He plays a Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a basic forest. He generates 2 green mana from Carpet of Flowers. He casts Wild Growth targeting Gaius Cradle. Luis plays a Kinnon. He taps Cradle and uses the remaining mana to cast Elish Norn. In response, Baal sacrifices his creature to ping my Thrasios. Elish Norn enters the battlefield and all other creatures die. So much for destroying survival of the fittest and stopping Luis from getting Elish Norn in his hand. Luis goes to combat and attacks David with the Revi. At this point, David is just accumulating commander damage from everyone. The Revi triggers and Luis untaps Breeding Pool. He then casts a Thassa's Oracle for value because he already lost the Breakfast combo and passes the turn. David plays a Forest and taps an Island for a Seal of Removal. Then he passes. Bal draws for turn and thinks for a bit. He plays a Basic Forest and also passes the turn. On my turn, I draw and start by casting a Brainstorm. I need a solution for the Elish Norn, otherwise my deck just cannot go off. I follow it up with a Mana Crypt and an Underworld Breach. It resolves, and I cast Windfall for my graveyard, exiling three other cards. This gives the Vid a window to sacrifice his Seal of Removal and bounce the Elish Norn back to Luis's end. From there, it will be simply discarded. The Vid also responds by casting Crop Rotation, sacrificing his Gaius Cradle to find a Strip Mine to deal with Luis's own Cradle. Bal responds with an uncounterable Savage Summonings to flash an equally uncounterable Academy Rector. It enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters from the Riot Trigger and the Savage Summonings. This is definitely a scary play since Bal already has a Goblin Bombardment on the battlefield. We all start thinking about what he might be able to get with it. Rest in peace, maybe a Splinter Twin. We conclude that it's probably fine for now. Windfall resolves and we each discard and draw 4 cards. I play an Arid Mesa from my hand cast Brainstorm from the graveyard to dig a little bit further and then crack the Mesa for a Steam Vents taking 2 damage. I then cast Paradise Druid and Mystic Remora. My hopes are that I get to go off the next turn. I attack the Vid for 2 damage, then go to my end step and sacrifice my Underworld Breach. Still on my end step, the Vid uses his Strip Mine on Luis's Cradle. On his upkeep, Luis takes 3 damage from Mana Creep. He plays a Sculling Tarn, cracking it for Basic Island. He then pays 1 green mana to cast Noxious Revival, targeting his Elish Norn and letting me draw a card off of Remora. I cry out in panic because I really don't need that Elish Norn on the battlefield right now. However, the Noxious Revival resolves and Luis activates the Kinan to cheat it onto the battlefield. He then casts a Dranith Magistrate, preventing Atla or Muldrotha from being cast from the command zone. Luis goes to combat and swings with the Revi, Thassa's Oracle and Kinnan at the Vid for 11 damage putting him at 5 life. He chose to pressure the Vid mostly because he needs players out of the table and the Vid is the one who has the most targeted removal. Luis then untaps Mana Crypt and 2 lands with the Revi and sticks the last nail on my coffin by casting Eidolon of Rhetoric to keep me and the Vid from messing with him too much. He passes the turn. On his turn, David plays an Underground Sea. He then casts an Either Spellbomb. He passes. On his end step, though, Bal finally sacrifices Academy Rector to Goblin Bombardment, pinging Akiri for 1 damage and killing it. He goes and finds a Defense of the Heart. It's a pretty good spell, but there's still an Elish Norn in place, so we're pretty sure he can't do anything broken with it. On Bal's upkeep, he sacrifices Defense of the Heart and gets Kiki Jiki and Village Bell Ringer. They each enter with a plus one plus one counter from Rhythm of the Wild. You see, Riot is not an ETB trigger. This means that neither Kiki Jiki nor the Bell Ringer will die to the Elish Norn. Now, Bal can make an infinite amount of 0-2 Bell Ringers. Then, they can all be sacrificed to Goblin Bombardment for infinite damage. The Vid does have an either spell bomb, but it is unfortunately not enough to stop this madness, as Bal still has enough mana to hard cast the Kiki Jiki again during his main phase. David still activates his Cephalid Colosseum in response to the first activation. He finds nothing. 
He cracks his spell bomb for a card and also nothing. Thus, with the sneaky defense of the hard play, Bal sneaks another victory at the split second game table. This was definitely a game to remember for us and we will all think about defense of the heart next time we see someone playing Academy Rector. What a game! Thanks for following us through this match everyone! Synergistic enchantments on Atla win this game! We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Carneiro, Troy, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo and Eagle are stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!